Hey guys, what's going on? Shaw here, and today in this video, we're just going to be quickly going through a couple of like commonly asked questions, so like an FAQ of sorts, just to kind of answer a lot of the questions I've been getting on Discord, YouTube, and on my Twitch chats, just about what covenant to play, what you should be spending your you know diner on, your currency, what gear you should be farming, what bounty you should be taking. So all of that stuff, I'm going to try to answer in this video. Remember to hit that like and sub button, and of course, enjoy the video. All right, so first things first, a common question that I get asked is what secondary stat breakpoints should a Guardian Druid be focused on hitting? Now, this answer is pretty simple. Get your haste to 24%. And the reason for this is really to get your thrash to a certain breakpoint so you can actually hit it every fourth global instead of every fifth global. It also gets your dot tick rates to a point where you can sustain iron fur almost permanently in almost any size pull, even single targets, though more haste is also fine. So at least 24% is what you want to get to. After that, focusing on versatility or mastery are both fine. Versatility, you tend to want to aim towards the 30% breakpoints. After that, there will be a diminishing return in effect. And then, so after that, you can actually just target mastery if you'd like. If not, you can keep going into verse or you can get your haste up to 26, 27, 28%. That is all fine. So priority is haste, verse, and then after that, it really doesn't matter. All right, the second question I get asked often and also critiqued on whenever I post a video is... What bounty should I be taking in keys as a Guardian Druid? So more often than not, haste is going to be your number one choice. So the haste, especially from the bounties, haste scales our tick rate of thrash, which means that we're just going to naturally generate more rage. In turn, that means just more iron furs. Therefore, we're going to be a little bit more sturdy when it comes to physical attacks. Haste doesn't necessarily help us out when it comes to magical damage, though it will make our frenzied regen be able to actually be used more often than not. But... If you're nervous about the survivability aspect in the key, versatility isn't a bad choice either, If and this is especially in the case if you accidentally forget to pick up your bounty at the start of a key. Versatility was nerfed back on PTR. It used to be 2% similar to verse and critical strike, but since they cut it in half down to 1%, most druids have been opting to take haste. But if you go into a key and you're nervous that you will you know, fall over, I just recommend taking versatility as long as you have hit your 24% haste breakpoint. All right, another question I've been getting relentlessly since the third week of this season is what should I spend my diner currency on? In essence, the, this currency is actually supposed to be used as bad luck protection. So if you're targeting a specific piece and you can't get it to drop over a week or two or you know two or three times that you see the raid, that's when this currency should come in. There are some players who opted to just spend their currency right upon getting it, there are some players who have been holding on to their currency, waiting to see once the next raid comes around if they can get it to drop before spending it. This is a very limited currency. Most players will only be able to use this at most three times, so treat it as bad luck protection and don't just buy an item immediately. But if you were looking to buy an item, I recommend Shard of Van Hild or Reactive Defense Matrix. Both of these trinkets are very good from Sanctum of Domination for Guardian Druids. Besides that, if you're looking to buy a weapon, you can either go Jotengeir, Destiny's Call, you can get Zovastrum, or Gavel of the First Arbiter. Which kind of leads me to my next question that I've been getting a lot. Is Gavel worth buying? And or the other question is, if I don't want to buy Gavel, what should I use? So, is Gavel worth buying? No. And before you guys flame me, I think unless you really already have all the gear you want or you're really trying to min-max your damage in raids or keys, don't buy it. If you want to do that, by all means, it's a video game, do what you want. Gavel does technically sim higher than all other weapons at that item level, so if you're looking to really eke out a little bit of extra damage, feel free to use Gavel. Just keep in mind that it is a strength weapon. The proc slash on use effect from it is completely RNG. You don't really have control over that aspect of it. It could be the, the worst buffs or the best buffs. Some of the buffs that you get also give like strength and bonuses. It's not going to impact Guardian Druid at all. The only thing you're really using is like the application of damage. So I would say for the average bear player, I would focus on getting the gear that's designed for your class. This kind of leads into like the fifth question. If I don't want to use Gavel or buy Gavel, what weapons should I target? Here is what I've recommended. I'm not sure if this is going to ring true or not, but this is what makes sense for me and this is what I'm going to be doing. 
If you are mythic raiding, meaning you are getting a currency to upgrade items to mythic quality, and you don't want gavel, very two important conditions for this, you should buy Zovastrum. If you can upgrade it to mythic quality, it's going to be a massive 311 item level weapon, which weapon damage is really, really good. It also has crit and verse on it, both very strong stats for the Guardian Druid, especially when it revolves damage and survivability. But if you're heroic raiding, I recommend just targeting Jotengeir Destiny's Call from the Nine and Sanctum of Domination for larger incarns. Now keep in mind that the Jotengeir use effect for that weapon actually shares an internal cooldown with your trinkets. So you pair the weapon with incarnation and then you can use two trinkets outside of your incarnation windows to bolster your survivability. Okay, this is another question that I've had a lot. If you don't raid, what trinkets should you aim for? Uh, there are people who just don't have time to raid. That's why Mythic Plus is attractive. Some people find raiding boring, like myself. Now, I still raid because I, well, one, I have the free time. Two, I like to have the best gear in game when I, when I play. But if you don't raid at all, I recommend going for... Actually, there's a ton of good dun There's a ton of good trinkets from these dungeons. You have things like Enforcer Stun Grenade on a 2-minute CD, very strong. You have the Targeting Reticle, which is also like a nice verse stat stick. It gives about 4-5% to verse at max item level. You also have like Codex of First techni Technique. This is similar to Reactive Defense Matrix. It just gives Stam instead of Agility. But Stam for Bear isn't the worst thing to have. And then, of course, you have things like Soleil's Secret Technique, which is just going to be kind of a stat stick. All of these are fine for Guardian Druid, but the Ray Trinkets tend to be a little stronger, but of course these will, you know, suffice. Is Night Fae a viable coven for Guardian Druid? So you're going to be missing out on a ton of damage if you play Night Fae, but you're going to find yourself with an extra defensive with Convoke. Convoke is on a very strong, it's a very strong 1 minute CD, and you can use it defensively or offensively. Now, you're, of course, you're not going to have these crazy incarnation windows, but... It tends to be a solid choice if you're feeling squishy or weak when you're going into some of these keys playing Venthyr. Now, I will mention that Kyrian is also a great choice for bolstering your party's damage and adding an additional defensive to your toolkit. Kyrian also has the added benefit of removing some bleeds and dot effects, which, if you haven't already tanked a lot of these keys, there are a ton of really nasty bleeds and debuffs in these, in these dungeons, and having the Kyrian file on a 3-minute CD is actually insane. Unfortunately, Bear is one of the only classes, tank classes, that can't play Dwarf to be able to remove things like that. So Kyrian is our best choice for removing those types of debuffs. Last but not least, I've had a ton of people asking if it's worth even gearing their Guardian Druid this patch or if they should just reroll to another tank. Guardian Druid's kind of in a point right now where you... We're kind of waiting for Dragonflight because it's, it's pretty clear that this season we're not going to get any buffs and there aren't... There isn't much that Blizzard can do to our toolkit or our class without redesigning the class to make it stronger. At the end of the day, I think Guardian Druid is a fine tank. If you enjoy the class, go and play it. I'm doing that actually, and you can see me watch, uh, see me play keys live on Twitch if you'd like to. Just know that you're going to face a little bit of pug discrimination due to players shitting on the class, <laughs> myself included. Guardian Druid is just in a point where they're a lot weaker compared to other tanks, especially when you're pushing keys, and players will deduct points from you for that. If you enjoy the class and you're fine with a little bit of uh, struggling a little bit and trying to find groups and pugs, then by all means play the Guardian Druid. There are also some great tanks out there currently that you can play. Brewmaster is one of my favorites outside of the Guardian Druid. Warrior is actually extremely fun and fast-paced. Um, and even Paladin recently got a pretty massive buff. So there's a lot of similarities between Guardian Druid and Paladin. And if you enjoyed the Guardian Druid, more than likely you'll enjoy the Prop Paladin. So those are all the questions that I've been getting over the last few weeks. If you have any questions that I didn't answer here, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And I will either make a part two to this, or I'll just respond to your comment trying to answer your question the best, you, best that I can. Like I mentioned, if you'd like to see me stream keys live and push on the Guardian Druid, feel free to check me out on Twitch. I also have a lot of routes and guides and stuff in my Discord, so you can find some stuff there as well. And of course, thank you so much to my Patreons, Brian and Linus, for supporting my channel with your real-life money. I couldn't thank you guys enough. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.